It's Morning Becomes Eclectic at 89.9 KCRW and a live set from Black Rebel Motorcycle Club. And we're talking with Rob Turner, who plays bass and uh, is one of the vocalists in the band. First of all, I want to thank you guys for coming back to our program. It's been a couple of years. How's, how's things going? It's been a long time, yeah. No, everything's everything's yeah. good. We're, you know, it's probably a good thing we haven't been back. Too busy, you know? <laughs> I mean, that's probably a good sign, you know? I think you were living in London last time you were on uh, on on the show, right? You guys relocated over there for a period of time. I don't think we were living there when we were when we uh, were were in the studio with you. I think I think that was kind of right after. Um, oh, you moved there just I afterwards. I think so. No, I don't remember last time we were there. But um, yeah, we we kind of we had to spend a year there living and um, kind of getting our drummers' visa sorted out. And it's it was an adventure, you know. Kind of looked at it like that. It wasn't. It wasn't the best thing that could ever happen, but it wasn't the worst. I was going to say. I was going to ask you why, but obviously you just answered the question. Nick, who plays the the drums in the band, is is from England, and I guess you just had to be there for a while because he couldn't be here. Is that right? Um, had to stick with him. Yeah, he 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 couldn't come back to the states. Right. He's kind of banned as soon as he left the country. So we we chose to to tour kind of everywhere else and and kind of say goodbye to America for a while and it turned out all right I mean the the thing was it was like we left knowing it could be it could be a year if we we're lucky but worst case would have been like seven to ten kind of like you know jail sentence probably I was gonna say that'd be a prison sentence yeah yeah exactly but no we we, we lucked out we came back sooner than we thought and and things yeah. did did really well for you as well though didn't they over in Europe the first album did uh, did really well over there yeah it was that was kind of where it's, the spark started, you know. I mean, that was that was great. A lot of bands, kind of like American bands, got treated well over there. Can't say why. Nick, Nick has a theory, but I don't think it's very nice to to British or actually everybody. He kind of puts everyone down when he says it. Well, but, can you can you say it in a nice way? Um, I don't know. It's kind of like he thinks like British press kind of care more, but then again, he says that's the reason they're crap at the same time because they care too much and then i don't know it's just this whole spin-off but um i don't know i don't really ask why you know not ours is to not ask why but to do and die so you know the the uh, the british press um is, is very fickle but they actually really warm to you guys so i guess you uh you came along at the right time i that. guess so yeah <laughs> you know a lot a lot of bands I don't, it's a good time it's a great time to be in a band great time to be making music there's there's just good, good music being made, and good competition, and good inspiration, and that's all it's about. So you can, you know, thank anybody for that, I guess. So when did you actually get back and um, relocate to the states and uh, back to Los Angeles? Um, I think it was right after we finished. We we just finished recording the record, and um, we kind of got the break. Me and me and Peter went back a little early and um, fin and mixed the whole album in L.A. And it came like a month later. So the new record was actually made over in London. Yeah, it was recorded there. Yeah. Tell tell us about that. I mean, you're um, coming off a first record, which was pretty successful, um, and coming to your second record. How did you did you approach it? And especially you making it over in the UK. The main the main thing was just getting the studio fast while we were still you know still sharp and still you know had the songs in our head. And not kind of uh, not take you know a couple months off and just get get soft and sloppy again. So that was like, I mean, we gotten really honed and really kind of like you know toughened up from from playing so many shows on that tour. I think that was the best thing about it. That was the only thing in our head really was just get in and get it down, you know, and and then worry about it later. So did you make this record a lot quicker than the than the uh, the first one? Yeah, but that was that was just because we kind of. You know, learn, learn, listen that from the first one. You know, kind of sure. what what not to do. But um, you know, the 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 mistakes are good too. <laughs> you know, you want a little of that. This record seems a, a lot more. Um, I don't know. Seems lean. You know, taut. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A little faster. Yeah, it gets those physical references. My fat, cut the fat. That, cut yeah. the fat. Yeah. Well, tell us about it's, that. It's, I hate describing. Um, you can't, you know. It's just, it's just a record. It's just more songs, you know. I mean, there's something great about it. There's something great about the last one. Can't be compared, you know. It's a bit, it's a bit raw, but 
you know, it's all just words at the end of the day. It's just more words for more words for more words. It's it's got to be heard, you know. I mean, it's the music has to be heard, and then don't want to tell people what it's like because people have different different feelings about it, you know. It's like it's like I'm really proud of the record, you know. We're we're really proud of what we've done, and we went in trying to kind of make, yeah, like a bit a bit something with with kind of. Uh, a bit more direct in the words and in the music because we'd gone on the road, we'd played, we kind of found that you only get one chance, you know, you only get one chance to speak to people, one chance when they're, you know, when when they're, they're with you, you know, for an hour on stage or for an hour listening to a record and if they don't like it, you might not even get that full hour, so it's kind of, I think we just wanted to cut through, you know, in every way and and that that affected the sound, and I think that affected the words. But it, it, that's the way we wanted to go. But know? obviously, you know, when you when you head in to uh, to a studio, there is some kind of maybe not a manifesto, but there's there's something you're throwing down, right? Um, tried to keep that out of it. Tried to not make a concept record. You know, the only idea was let's make you know the best rock and roll album we can. Let's let's keep the energy. Let's keep the focus. That the focus you'd have playing a show from from start to finish. That that you know builds and and keeps this energy the whole time. The the trick the trick that always happens. You're in the studio and then you start double thinking and you start thinking it's got to be something else. And you know you think what's going on in your head is really special when it's it's not. What the the, the sound that the band's making, the sound that's coming out naturally is. That's that's what you're supposed to listen. That's what could be your guide in that, you know, not not your own head trip. There's nothing that you know. How much influence does a um, an A and R guy or the record label have on this on this process? Because I know that your label went through some changes in between records, and um, your original A and R guy Tony Berg wasn't with the the label anymore. Um, what kind of difference does that make? Is does it make much of a difference when when you're working for a major record label? Yeah, it does. It does, but but it you know we're kind of uh, we we kind of like to face face things like head on, you know, and not not kind of take the I don't know the easier way. It's a good challenge, you know. That's a, talk to bands on the road, and it's like oh f majors this and that, and it's not it's not about that. It's kind of that's a way to get your music heard, you know, in the real sense, and you know, get it as far as you possibly can to as many people as you can, and that's what it's really about, you know, if you're going to sell out, you're going to do this, or, you know, the control you give is, you know, it is given, so it's up to you to keep it, and I think, I think when we first started, it was, it was tough, yeah, it was tough to, like, be a new band with nothing, like, no credibility, really, nothing to stand on, but you know, we knew how to be annoying. <laughs> we knew how to we knew how to bitch and moan, and that that worked for a while. Um, <laughs> that was the first record, and so and you kind of got through it. You know, are you not as annoying now? No, well, I think I think <laughs> it's just more more aware that we're annoying. So no, oh, we, we you know we we people people caught on. It just took a little while. Right. No, we just got we 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 made the first record, and so far so good. Some good, good new people came on, and and they let us make the record we wanted, and we didn't, you know, it was just about, you know, they saw that we could do it, and they saw that there's nothing wrong with that, so they let us do it again. They left you to it, you know. We Pretty screw much. this one, up, they screw this one up, and then we don't get another one. <laughs> That's usually the way it goes. Well, you, you said earlier on that you're, you're very proud of the record that you made, and um, you're taking it out there now and playing the new songs to the audiences, obviously, uh, uh, across the States right now, and I'm sure you'll be back in Europe soon. How's it, how's it going? Dreadful, dreadful. Every show's a mess. No. <laughs> um, we, made it, we made it to the East Coast. Today's the East Coast. Um, right. So far, so good, man. No, it's... it's um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Didn't didn't know what to expect coming back home, you know, playing. I hadn't played America for a long time, and and there's all the thoughts and worries in your head that you're going to be forgotten or, not, you know, or this this or that is going to happen. But no, people people are still still coming out for us, you know. So, is is there a feeling of momentum? Yeah, 
I could I could use five minutes. <laughs> I could use five minutes alone, but um, no. not gonna get that, you know. <laughs> no, no, yeah, not today. Not it's today. relentless. Well, listen, um, we're gonna go back to the second set of music. I want to thank you for uh, for first of all playing the session that we taped a couple of weeks ago in town, and then recording this interview for us as well. That and, thing almost um, killed us, man. I have to apologize to all the uh, all the engineers and put up with us for that for that day. Okay, I want to tell Mario, our engineer here now, to, to <laughs> take a clip of this and put it on a CD, and we'll send it over to the guys <laughs> at, at the village. Uh, we, we, anytime you get us in the studio, you know we don't leave until we get it yeah. right. All apologies around. Well, listen, thanks for coming in uh, and doing the interview today and obviously doing our session a couple of weeks ago that we recorded uh, on a Sunday over at the Village. We're going to go back to the to the next set of music. It's Rob Turner, Peter Hayes, and Nick Jago, and they are Black Rebel Motorcycle Club on Morning Becomes Eclectic. <laughs> 